Hello and welcome to Simulation TV. My name is Sean Gedman. I'm a product support specialist with uh, Autodesk. Today we're going to be going over uh, simulation mold flow and in specific uh, detail determining ideal machine settings for um, the process. So our problem description today will be um, where we'll use this exercise to cover how to use a molding window analysis to help establish an acceptable processing window for our analysis. Some key learning objectives that we'd like to cover during this time frame would be to how to import your geometry, how to generate a dual domain mesh within the software, how to set up your simulation for the molding window analysis, and how to review the results. Now we will go live to the simulation to go through the steps. Yep. All right, now that we're in the software, we'll take you through a quick uh, intro on how to set up the molding window analysis here. And with, with anything in the software, we design it to work from left to right, top to bottom. So um, naturally, we're going to start up here in the upper left corner, and we want to bring in our CAD geometry. So we'll use this import option and today we're going to be working with a drill housing, half of a drill housing. During this import menu, we have the option to choose our desired mesh type. You have mid-plane, dual domain, or 3D. This part's going to be in dual domain, so we'll leave it there. If um, you mess up on this section, then that's okay. We can, we can correct that at a later time. So it should only be a few seconds to import our CAD model here. All right, we have our model in the software. Of course, these are just CAD surfaces, so what we have to do at this point is uh, create a mesh based off of these surfaces so we can run our analyses. Um, to do that, again, we're gonna start, we're going to work from left to right up here. You can see this is the option where you can choose a mesh type. So as I mentioned during the import, if you did not choose the one that you wanted, you can always modify or change that here at this point in time. Um, so what we're going to do is use the mesh button and we're going to generate mesh. Now we'll use a global edge length of about two millimeters. It's, the software is usually pretty good at giving a, a reasonable recommendation. Our merge tolerance is adequate for this and then our mesh match, that's something that uh, we do want to have enabled for specifically the dual domain mesh type because that helps with accurate thickness interpretations. So at this point we would hit mesh now to mesh the model, but I'm going to cancel of it because we already have a mesh model here for the sake of saving some time for this uh, brief intro. So here is the mesh part, um, and what we're going to do is basically work through our list. Uh, first thing we're going to do is choose the mesh type. You can choose molding window analysis. If you do not see it in this uh, list of popular or most commonly used analysis sequences, you can use the more button to access additional analysis sequences here. So we have that selected, OK. Next thing we'll do is select our material. For this point, you can either use a search to find the desired material you would like, or you could use the drop down menus to search by manufacturer and trade name. For this exercise, we're just going to use a generic ABS material um, that we have in the software. The next step we'll go into, we set the injection location, because at this point, hopefully you have a good idea of at least where you want your injection location, or you ran the best gate location analysis to determine this for you. So you would select the injection location, and I've placed mine here. The next step um, would be to go into our process settings now. So that's down here. Of course, we're working top to bottom, as I mentioned. Um, we leave, I typically use these on the automatic settings. 
Um, advanced options is kind of where you're going to adjust some of your settings that would be more unique to your setup. So uh, your shear rate limits, your shear stress limit, flow front temperature drops, just kind of uh, how important these are to you and the factors. So I am going to leave these at the defaults. They're pretty good um, starting points, pretty good. Uh, that's why they're there by default. The other thing that's very important with this analysis sequence is to choose your injection molding machine because a lot of these results that we'll later view, they're based off of your machine's limitations and things of that effect. So um, we need to have your injection molding machine there so we know the pressure limitations. So now that we have our process settings, that's all we need to start our analysis here. So we would start this analysis and we have some results here. Basically what the molding window analysis is doing is it's, it's evaluating uh, your part geometry, the gating location, um, the pressures that are going on during the injection process and it's taking all and the material and it's taking all four of these factors into uh, affect to basically judge the quality of your part and help you pick an optimum uh, injection time, mold temp, and melt temp. So now that the analysis is complete, the first thing we want to do is go to the logs. And in the logs at the very bottom of the file, you'll see that we have a uh, recommended mold temp, recommended melt temp, and injection time. So um, we want to take note of these because we have to use them as inputs into our uh, plots over here that we'll now take a look at. So the first one we look at is going to be the quality plot. And this is just as, it's, as it states, it's, it's judging the shear rates, shear stresses, uh, pressure drops, things like that, that will uh, kind of affect the overall quality of our part. So naturally, after we set this up, um, we're going to look for the highest peak on our curve because that's going to be deemed the highest quality. So right click properties and you're going to set up your injection time we got in the logs, your melt temp, your mold temp, and then uh, we're making the injection time the x-axis because that's going to be the dominant factor so that we want to make sure this check mark is checked right here. So now we're going to go into results and query our results. And you can see the very top, that's our, that's our injection time. It's the highest quality. So that's, that's good news for us. That means we're on the right track here. On to the next plot. This is what we call um, the zone or the 2D slice plot. And what this is just giving us our process window for uh, the software and Again, in the properties, we're going to change the cutting plane to mold temp, put in our uh, recommended mold temp from the log file, hit OK. We'll examine our result, and we want to pick right where we're at based off of our um, melt temp and injection time. So I'll move to the side here a little bit so you can see uh, we're right around here, right in the middle. So that puts us right in the middle of, our, of the process range. Depending on the material you use, uh, this range could be broader. It could be a lot wider. This is a pretty narrow um, processing window. Um, but you know, green is definitely the preferred area. If you get into the yellow, we can still work with that, it's still feasible, but you definitely do not want to get into a red zone or a red band because that means it's not going to be a feasible uh, molding condition. You either have short shots or, or very undesirable effects on your part from uh, those process conditions. Now the next plot is going to be pressure drop. Um, we're going to interrogate this one and, and investigate this one a little bit as well. So again, first thing, right click properties, injection time, melt temp, mold temp. 
Um, we're going to put those into uh, there, and of course, injection time is going to be your x axis. So for this one, basically, we're searching for our injection time on here. And you can see we're right around, right around 50 megapascals or so for our result, um, for our injection time of 0.9. So our machine setting that we picked when you go into your process settings, You can look, our, our limit's 180 megapascals right here for the machine that I selected. So at being that we're not even at 50 megapascals, we're, we're well within the limitations of our machine on this one, so that's okay. Temperature at flow front, this is another important one that we're looking at. And again, into the properties, set our injection, injection time, our desired uh, process conditions from our logs. Make the injection time your x-axis. So again, checkbox here. And what we're going to do again is examine the results and look for our injection time here. Uh, the, the goal of this plot is, you know, your flow front temp. This is, this is tracking it and seeing what the minimum flow front temp is in your part. So ideally, we want this as close to your specified melt temperature as possible. Our specified melt temperature in this case is the preferred at 255C. So um, we're going to look at our injection time and you can see it's right around 255C, which is great. Um, if you can get this within 10 degrees, that would be acceptable. Definitely don't want um, this minimum flow front temperature to vary more than 20 degrees C from your, your melt temp or else that's going to be a problem. It could result in any number of things. Now on to the, the last two plots here. Um, these are pretty much just like the other ones. You know, these are all XY plots. We're going to go into the properties, set optimum process conditions, and injection time is still going to be our X axis. Now again, examine and we're going to look at our injection time to to try to find where our uh, what our shear rate is in this instance and to do that you can might know this about your material maybe not so you can right click on the material we selected go into details and then right in your recommended processing conditions here you can see we have a specified or a maximum recommended shear stress and shear rate. Um, at our injection time right now, we have a shear rate of about a little over 3,000 reciprocal seconds, so uh, well within 50, 000, our, our limit of 50,000 reciprocal seconds. Now the last plot, I'm not going to go into that. It's uh, basically shear stress. It's the same way. You're gonna set it up just like the shear rate. And, and compare it to this number to uh, see if you meet that range. And that, in summary, is what the molding window is. I hope you've learned something from this video, and uh, have a good day.